So it seems like most of you, that's all I have a seat right down. Uh, are most of you understanding that uh, what I'm saying if I complete the table is that x is going to be each of these seven values. Now we're going to do like the same thing seven times and get seven different results for y. By replacing x with whatever we're choosing to replace it with. So for the first one, we'll do negative 3 2 thirds times negative 3 plus 5. I'm just replacing x with negative 3. And sometimes it's easier just to write it over 1 so that we can make sure the fractions uh, get multiplied together the way they ought to. So 2 times negative 3, right, when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators together and the denominators together, getting negative 6 over 3, negative 6, 2, divi two times negative 3, 3 times 1, right here, right? It's 5. Okay. Now, in this case, it's convenient because negative 6 can be divided by 3. What is negative 6 divided by 3? Negative 2. Negative oh, divided by positive is negative, right? Oh, 6 divided by 3 is 2, negative 2. Over 1. <coughs> well, yeah, we don't even have to worry about it anymore because we're kind of like out of the fractions realm. Well. Negative 2 plus 5 three. is 3. Oh. Okay, a lot of you have 3, so I should leave that. So I'm going to gonna do one more, okay, and then I'll... I'll pause for a bit, and you guys can continue. I'll do negative 2. We'll put negative 2 over 1 here. 2 thirds times negative 2 over 1. We multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 5. Now the thing about this situation is that negative 4 can't be divided by 3 like negative 6 could. So if we're going to combine these together, what are we going to need, need to find? Common denominator. Okay, so we'll put this over 1. It's, you know, it doesn't change anything. Any number can be over 1. And we need a denominator of what? 3. three. three. Okay. So multiply this by 3. We multiply the numerator by 3. Get negative 4 thirds plus 15 thirds equals 11 thirds. We could write this. Now, this is... As simple as it can be, 11 and 3 don't share any factors. It can't be simplified anymore. But we can write it as a mixed number if we want. 3 and 2 thirds. And if we do write it as 3 and 2 thirds, then it can be helpful when we're graphing it, which we will do in a while. It's a little easier to figure out where 3 and 2 thirds is than to count out 11 thirds. Okay. I'll try and do both and show you how they're the same thing. So sometimes, maybe, the, this, this guy can be simplified, and other times it can't. Sometimes we need to find a common denominator, and sometimes we don't. Right. Let's continue right, in our, on our own papers, with our own work, to, uh, you know, if, if you made a mistake there, don't worry about it. Just improve. Fix that mistake. Try the next one. Don't make that mistake the next time. And fill out this whole table. I'm gonna pause for a minute and then uh, walk around the table, walk around the room, and and then uh, we'll try another one again together. Plugging in negative one for x, and maybe writing it over one would help us to keep things straight. Two times negative one is negative two. Three times one is three. That's five. Well, it would be great if uh, three could divide by negative divide negative two, but we're gonna again have to find a common denominator, and it's gonna be this. The same again, right? It's still five. The denominator is still three, so we're again going to find a common denominator of three. It's going to give us fifteen thirds. Okay. Negative two thirds. We take two thirds away from fifteen thirds. How many thirds do we have? Thirteen. We have thirteen thirds. Which is four. Three. Four and one third. Yeah, four and one third. I got the third. Okay. Let's do this one because this one should be. Yeah. Five. Actually, Mac walked in and said, I know zero because that's the easiest one. It's five. Because it, what we're doing is putting a zero in for x. Zero is being multiplied by two thirds. What's anything times zero? Zero. 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 Plus five equals five. And there couldn't be an easier addition problem than zero plus five. Uh -huh. 
continue on to one, two, and three. One, two thirds times one, so that's five. Mm -hmm. Three times one is two, three times one is three. And there's no surprise, two thirds times one is two thirds. Anything times one is one itself. Plus, we'll just go ahead and write 15 thirds, because I know that I'm going to need that, because I know two thirds can't be simplified. And so we have 15 thirds plus two thirds, 17 thirds. Or if we prefer. Five and two thirds. Five and two thirds. Oh, yeah. Yeet. Yeah. Okay. We'll switch it now to two. Two times two is four, three times one is three. Plus, again, 15 thirds. That doesn't simplify. What's that? 19 thirds. Or if we prefer six, six, six and one third. Six and one third. Oh, that two. Now, something this time nice is going to happen. Something nice is going to happen this time when we plug a 3 in here and multiply it together. 2 times 3 is 6. And 6 can be divided by 3. 2 plus 5. 7. Be careful about being the person with all the answers. And Pushing us and rushing us as a class through the answers, okay? Because while well, that may be great for you, it's not great for everybody, okay? So just jumping and pushing, going and going and going and going does not necessarily help the people around you. It's not really helping you, so let's just make choices that help ourselves and help each other, right? And support each other as we try to learn new things. Uh, we have some, some time right now. I want to ask you, when we find a common denominator, why do we do that? No, 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 no. no. I'll try. Not me. Not me. Go ahead. Because you can't do it. Like, it doesn't like work. Okay, it doesn't work. Maybe let's look at uh, an example that I'm going to make up right now. Like, uh, four fifths plus two. So what is it that doesn't work about doing something like 6 over 6, like 4 plus 2 and 5 plus 1? What is it that doesn't work about that? Tell me what it is that doesn't make sense about it. No, I mean like for multiplication. For multiplication? Like that's what you're talking about, right? No, just mm -hmm. adding these fractions together and making a very common mistake by just adding the numerators together and the denominators together. Like what's the problem? Why can't why can't that be it? James? What's so the one problem? might be a different thing than the five. Like the five could be apples and then the one could be oranges. No. Okay, I would say it's okay, I'm gonna use a fancy word. I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you a new fancy word. Okay? It's analogous. What? That sounds fun. You know what analogous means? No. Okay. Yes. You know what, a, know what an analogy is? I heard so. Doesn't that mean like similar? Guess it's like a No, it doesn't well. It doesn't exactly mean similar. It compares one thing to another. Like comparison. Okay, yeah, it compares one thing to another, but two things that aren't really the same thing. So trying to add these two together is like trying to add apples and oranges. Doesn't mean that it is apples and oranges. It's like it. It's like adding apples and oranges because apples and oranges don't add. Apples add to apples, oranges add to oranges. And as James pointed out, fifths and holes don't add together. A fifth can't add to a hole. At least like I can't count them up. Can someone like describe a picture of four fifths? What a picture of four fifths look like. Someone ate four fifths of the pie. Okay, so pie. How do I show this? How do I show four fifths using this? Pie? Okay, I'll, they'll all be, I'll try to make them all equal sizes. Okay, I'll, that's, okay, let's 
pretend they're all one side. One, two, three. So many four pieces of pie. Okay. And we can't just say pieces. We got to be more specific. They fits. Right? Fits is is very specific. Fifth means that it was cut into five pieces and somebody took four of the five. Right. What would two over one look like? Jasper, could it be like having one whole pie and then having an extra piece just kind of on top of it? Two and then just an extra piece? Two over one? Yeah, because it's an improper fact. Fraction. Well, like you could, let, me, let me take out the over one part. Two of what? Two of one. <laughs> Two full pies. And if we write if we write over one again, remember that as Maddie told us, we, we cut the pie cut the pie into five pieces. Cut the pie into five pieces. How would I cut a pie into one piece? Right. It is the pie, right? It is what it is one piece already. It's the pie. So Two pieces that are one whole pie each. One whole pie. So, answer me this. Can I just go one, two, three, four, five, six? No. Why not? I just did it. Why can't I do that? It's against the laws of nature. It's more against the laws of You need a common pies. denominator. What's that? I said you need a common denominator. Don't talk to me about pies. Pies don't have denominators. You don't that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be like similar. Um, I don't think these things that count. There are five pieces in that. And think those that pie has to have five pieces. So we can. This pie needs to have five pieces. Evenly. Try again. That's better, I think. What about this one? You throw that away. You can be tiny. Do you throw this away? No. What if we also cut that into five pieces? Now can I catapult, count up all the pieces? I guess I should shade these in because I, I have all of them. Can I add up all the pieces now? Because they are the same what? value. Value. Number. We're talking about the pie. Size. No. Size. The same size oh, pieces. Yeah. The same size slices. One, two, three, four, five. Do I have five of them now? Yeah, because they're the same kind of thing. They're the same size. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of them. Is it true? I mean, is that fair? Am I counting fourteen things? They're all the same thing. They're all the same size. So yeah, I can add them up. Okay. We made all of these guys to be cut into the same size pieces. Now we can count them up. And that's why we need what? Common denominator. Common denominator. There's a picture of why we need a common denominator. Not just that we need a common denominator. Remember, get your common denominator. Don't forget common denominator. Understand why you need the common denominator. The denominator tells you how big the pieces are. And if my pieces are different sizes, it makes no sense to try and add them up. And it really doesn't make sense to try and add the five and the one. I don't even know how to imagine what I'm doing there by adding that five and that one. But I want to add a, a bunch of pieces. I need the pieces to be the same size. Okay? So what did I do? I took the whole pieces, the whole pies, right? I cut them into five pieces. I took the one piece cut into five. I took both pies. I cut them into five pieces. So I have four fifths plus. You can see two pies cut into five pieces would be a total of ten fifths. There's my there's my picture of finding a common denominator. Fourteen fifths. That's why we need a common denominator because they need to be the same size. Okay. If you're still forgetting to get a common denominator, maybe you should. I feel like people who don't understand why we need a common denominator don't know what fractions really mean. And if you didn't spend the time to not just listen to this, but put it in their brains, okay, an explanation like this, have it ready for yourself or for other people to explain why you need a common denominator, what that looks like. Right, now, let's go back to the previous page. 
try and get, if we can, if it's possible, to change your hearts and minds. To uh, get rid of the stigma, this uh, phobia of graphs. There's nothing to be afraid of here. Right? So when I go to draw a graph, I don't want to think of it as like just a few points and then a line, or just a few points and then a squiggly curvy thing. That thing, that line or that curve, is built of what? Points. Points. And where do the points come from? So I have, now I have an equation. I've done some work. How can I turn that work into a graph? Graph. Okay. Plot what? Numbers. Which numbers? Negative three. Okay, so negative three. What is that? X. Where on the graph do I see X? Right there. Right there. Meaning, right, that label of X means, hey, this horizontal line. This flat axis, the horizontal direction, represents x. Okay. So we go to the left 3, because left is negative when we're going left and right. So we're at negative 3 for x. Go okay. up. We don't just put a point there. We go up to 3. three. So that one point can tell me two things. <laughs> By its horizontal and vertical position, it can tell me two things, an x and a y. So it tells me about this equation. That if x is negative 3 and y is 3, then it will be equal. Both sides will be equal. Okay, here's another solution, which could translate to another point. Negative 2 for x, 3 and 2 thirds for y. 3, right, and almost a 4, 2 thirds more. 3 and 2 thirds. Let me also show you that that's, that's 11 thirds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I always have the wrong place, but that's at 11 thirds. X could be negative 1, and Y could be 4 and 1 third. And now that I have three points, pretending like this was a complete mystery to me, I have these three points. I turn the numbers into points, and what do I start to notice about the points? They're in a straight line. Are all graphs going to turn out to be straight lines? No, nope. they're not. Okay. Actually, a very small set of all of the graphs that are possible are going to be straight lines. Very few graphs are actually straight lines. Most of them are not straight lines. We keep graphing. We have x is 0 and y of 5. That was nice, easy to graph. It's right there at the intersection of a horizontal and a vertical line. The intersection of, of this horizontal here and the vertical here is right on the dot. Those ones are easy to plot. One and five and two thirds. One, x is one. One, two, three, four, five, and two thirds. One, two, and six and a third. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one third. And now again, we come across this nice point, these nice two values that are easy to plot. 3, 7. 3 for x, 7 for y. And if I didn't believe that it was going to be a straight line when I had those three points, that I'd be convinced now, right, that seven points, all seven of them seem to be in a straight line. So if I were to plot more points, what do you think they would do? They would go on a line. Go on a line. We just keep going on that line. And so what I do now is I just kind of accept that and I say, all right, I believe that's going to be, all the other points are going to be in a straight line. And then I cheat. I cheat because really what I should have, if I was going to graph this, is I should plot all the points. How many points are there? Infinite. I don't have infinite. So I cheat and I just kind of scribble it in with this line. If I add all the time for all eternity, and I did plot all those points really close together, that's, that's the shape that would eventually take shape. Right? Start to form. Uh, to, and again, to help us get over this phobia and this stigma of graphs, I'm going to give you a different kind of a function. And 
And I want you to, you don't even have to grab it. I just want you to fill out the table for it. And this is going to be your homework. I'm going to give you a different function. Y equals x squared minus 4. And the table's the same, like the same x values. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 3, 3. How many tables? Can we do all those numbers? How many? How many x numbers? Just, so the same exact x numbers as we used for the, the previous one. Okay, negative so 3, negative 2, okay. those ones. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, which is the three that work. This is actually going to be a lot easier. So do you want us to, we don't want to graph it? We don't have to. We are going to graph it when we come back next class. So next class. So those are all the X's? Those are all the X's that I want you to use. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's going to be kind of hard. Oh, I see. I will say.